Hi everybody, so I have my laptop, I'm trying to make sure it does not overheat. I currently have another project exporting, um, that'll be uploading either tonight or tomorrow, you know how long. If you're somebody who does edit and upload videos, you're aware of exactly how long that takes. It is like sometimes like 72 hours to export something if it's a sizable video file and then so there's exporting and processing and then the uploading to YouTube and then the YouTube processing end in itself is it's it's a journey so um, what I'd like to make this video about today is um, I'd like to talk about some of the things that you deal with as a <sighs> there's no other way to say it. I've thought about it a few times, so basically as a millennial woman or as a woman in society during current times, um, even pandemic times, which is, I think it's really hard to have a video without discussing what's immediately in front of us. So yes, all of my most recent videos have mentioned the pandemic in one way or another. Um, I do still have, my hair is such an awkward length that I really don't feel comfortable without either an obscene amount of gel, which I, you know, an obscene amount of gel, I'm basically wearing a hat or a headscarf or something like that. So I hope you'll bear with me during sort of the grow out process. Um, I did shave my head in August sometime, and that's where some of my other videos. So over the course of this video, I'm going to be discussing not only things that have happened to me, but also people's stories that I've ask their permission to share. Um, I'm going to do my best not to divulge those people's names because a lot of them were of the mindset that they wanted to as anonymously as possible, which is totally doable and fine. Um, these were submitted to me either over email or Instagram, um, and they are stories of other women's discomforts, their personal experiences of what has had happened to them during a dating process or during, you know, unsolicited messages that they process or during, you know, unsolicited messages that they've received from men. Um, and I'm not, this video really isn't about like, it's not a hatred of a whole gender because obviously like, I think that there really is the shoot goes on both feet or whatever, like there are plenty of women who do send unsolicited messages that maybe men don't appreciate, like I really don't, I can only speak on like my experiences and the people that I've gotten permission to share stories from. So I'm really trying to stay within my lane um, of experiences that I've had, experiences that other people have had, and really only have received information from other women, other cisgender women. Um, and I'm, you know, if you do have other stories that you're comfortable with me sharing and you're of a different gender or a transgender person, um, I will be happy to, if you'd like to do another type of this video or if you have some additional comments that you'd like me to share in an additional video, I'm happy to do that. Uh, but for the time being, this is going to be mostly unsolicited messages or unsolicited actions from male partners uh, or male parties, not partners necessarily. So let's talk about, you know, I was born in 1994 um, and I think that that's a dangerous space to be in because that's really the space of like, okay, let's, you know, have a, a video recorder and record this child, you know, record every moment of their life, photograph every moment of their life. It was really like the space that I was in, like the minute I was born. I was photographed every single day, multiple times a day. There was a VCR home videos were like a huge, huge thing. Um, and I know I'm not alone in that, but like that was my household experience. Like everything was, um, you were basically taught very early. I was taught very early to be like, this is a thing that happens. People are going to take photos of you. People are going to consume that photo and like, you know, basically expecting to be presentable at all times because that's what's going to be 
expected is somebody's gonna pop out and be like smile or somebody's gonna pop out and be like hey like you know look at the camera and do whatever or go hug whomever and take a nice photo and I think that that's it's not something that sounds I realize like this is I'm realizing that a great deal of this is going to sound like a first world problem um, and it, you know, it's again I can only speak on my experiences the things that I did grow up with the things that I experienced within my own household and again within the sphere of things that I've been okay to share by other parties um, who have chosen to remain anonymous who are either my peers that I did go to school with or you know people that I've, I've met throughout the years who we're all going to be perhaps sounding like you know this is more modern experience it's not going to be relatable for everyone um, so I'm hoping that as much as that may seem, you know, whether it's a first world problem or not, like I'm hoping that you can just kind of get over, um, or that you're willing to continue to keep your ears open for other problems, even if that's not something that you have experienced in your personal life, or if you experience something that you perceive as like, oh, that's not that bad, I've, I've experienced worse. Well, of course, I'm so sorry that you have done that, or that you did have like, more physical violence at home of a different nature like of course i'm so sorry that that happened but i'm really hoping that you can hear like it's even though that was significantly also wrong like there are other types of things that will happen to people like i really don't want to get to the point where we're going like itemize for itemize like whose trauma is what and worse um so i'd really like to try and keep that out of the comments and out of the feedback for this video um, as best I can. Um, so it's no secret that I think that people of my age category who had a similar upbringing, um, again, always being photographed, always taking home movies of them, always taking, you know, basically always expected to smile at family functions where they knew they would be photographed and, you know, it was just there's something that teaches you right away that you have to be presentable, that you're expected to be whatever, and you want to do like funny, goofy things for the camera, or you want to be like poised and perfect for whatever home video is being taken um, so that it doesn't reflect poorly on whomever might be behind the camera. It's funny, I got up to film briefly and um, I have one cat here directly in front of my laptop. I have one back here. Actually, I sort of switched places, so. Um, so I think it's only fair to start by sharing some of my stories um, first. And I, <sighs> okay, this is just, it's, some of this stuff is just hard to talk about. Um, I have received many, many, many unsolicited pictures, unfortunately, in my time. Um, I've had a person who I hadn't talked to in ages hit me up and seemed like they wanted to, like, hey, how's your life going? I miss you. All these different things. And then, like, in the middle of a regular conversation, I was like, yeah, okay, good. I'm sorry that you're going through blank or like hey glad to hear you're doing better like just general regular conversations with nothing there was no segue there was no anything else um, and he sent me some unsolicited pictures and I blocked him right away I was like you're not gonna re-enter my life thinking that you want one thing or another and um um, I think that's really what I appreciated the least. I was like, at least if you had been upfront about that, I could have told you no sooner or could have said something else sooner. But the idea that like he was starting to say like he wanted to be a friend and wanted to do this and was like really like, and then to out of the blue, we'll see. 
out of the blue just throws up a picture of himself. Um, I was like, well, that's... you showed your true colors, I guess, you know. Can you... Okay. I have a cat who is very senior and he just does whatever he wants, unfortunately. And I very much love him because we're on, uh, we're running on bonus time. So, back to what I was saying. Um, I'm, I've had that experience and I think that's an unfortunate, really common thread. I just really watched, like, I'm not kidding, I have like three or four different um, TikToks that just immediately popped up to me while I was in the process of brainstorming for this video. Um, I had some, like, a, one of the sounds on TikTok right now is, um, it starts out being like, want to marry your daughter and make her my wife, and I don't know, I would play it, but I don't know if YouTube's gonna, like, have a fit about it, so, but it's, you know, the song that goes, I want to marry your daughter make her my wife and something something lover for the rest of my life and then like the <laughs> the other sound that it's cut with is uh middle fingers like treat her like a bitch and we all know that one so it's basically saying like the way people talk to you before a relationship or before activities start and like the way that they value you what they tell you that they want and how they're going to treat you versus how they actually treat you like once the relationship ensues and once they have the ability to like once they actually have you they have you like locked in they're ready to like give you the bare minimum most awful treatment so it's unfortunate like this is obviously remarkably common i don't need to tell anyone that um and it's also the idea of like unfortunately you're treating a woman like you're treating your property because it's the same idea of like, oh, I really want the new CD, or I really want this new movie, or I really want new whatever. And then once you have it, you're like, oh, okay, I played this game once, or okay, I played this whatever, I watched this movie twice, and I'm never going to pick it up again. It's like once you have that thing, you're like on to the next thing, or you're looking for something else. So it's, it's just unfortunate. Um, I've also had a lot scarier experiences because of some of my, hi, because of some of the roles I've had in my night jobs where even as a young person, like when I was clerical working at, um, either my very first job ever was receptionist at a nursing home and sometimes I would be there late at night even though, like not like super late like business late so like you know 8 p.m close for like a 8 30 you know leaving the building or like a you know something like that where like you're locking the doors at one point so that you can finish up whatever work is necessary and then you're leaving afterwards um, after you're close to the public, you like wait for that little bit of time and even that being in a secure setting like that is still a little bit nerve wracking because um, it's like typically the lights are off and you're, you may have a panic button on your desk, but the reality is you really don't always have that, like that's not a guaranteed thing. Um, so I've done that. God, I've done that in so many different instances. I worked at Seven Hills for a while, um, and I think I can talk about that without too much trouble, but like the, the facility that I worked in, the type of building I worked in was methadone dosing. So it's, you know, there was therapists and, you know, clinicians of different kinds, like regular counselors, as well as dosing going on. So patient records, things like that. And they had us in the building until 10 p.m. some days because the doctor was still like seeing people at that time it was just a very it was a highly like very fast-paced job and high like volume of people in and out all the time especially during the day and during the afternoon 
um, but there were, because of the quantity of clients that they were seeing, they had to extend their hours and make exceptions, and sometimes that was just the case. Um, so that was daunting for different reasons. Like, there was a part where I was actually, you know, behind the desk, and, like, people were pounding on the door, like, on the locked door, and, like, there were a couple points where, like, the doctor was still seeing people, and I was afraid of, like, walking out of the building. Um, and, like, just that notion of, like, okay, I'm gonna go in for my regular shift and my regular, regular job, because um, it's not like I was doing a lot of the immediate, like, you know, work with these clients for any length of time, but at, there was a certain point where, like, if you tell somebody information they don't want to hear when they're at a certain point in their life, like, when you're dealing with people who are in... So people who are in active addiction can't really always control how they're relaying information to you or how frustrated they get, and I 100% understand that. I've seen what that looks like, even within my own family, like, I know what active addiction looks like, um, and I, it's not something I hold against them, but there is, like, that real safety concern when you're on the receiving end of something like that. And, like, these are people who might remember your license plate numbers, or might remember, like, people would make totally unreasonable remarks about me. Or like, you know, really any, it wasn't just me, but it was like all the women behind the desk. It was, oh, I see you changed your hair. Oh, you look great in that. You know, you got your eyelashes done or whatever. And I'm like, we are all, it's just difficult. Like when you're a professional person, we're all, you know, you dress professionally for work, for, you know, appropriately for whatever tasks you're doing and in this particular case like with seven hills because of the nature and the location of that building it was everybody was in lab coats everybody was in like all behind glass um so appropriate precautions were being taken because of the type of clientele and that's not me being condescending like that was literally what was in mind just like this glass all the glass for the outside of the bullet the building was bulletproof all of the glass, like the barriers were designed to be as safe as possible. Each of the waiting rooms locked in and out, so you had to be buzzed in even from within the building. Um, so there's just things that when you stop When you stop and consider like the threats from like when you're at work don't always occur from the exterior perspective. Um, one of the most scary things that I had to deal with um, when I was at a medical facility, I'm going to do my best not to say which one, but there was a person who was a counselor or he was, you know, some supportive role. He was doing, I think, group counseling. Um, I don't know that he was doing like the any other role, but for some reason, I think of him as like a counselor role. And he was always really friendly to me, always really nice. I think there was one point where like he bought food, not for me, but it was like, well, yes, for me, but not just for me. But it was like me and one other person. Who I was working alongside with and he was like oh yeah I'll buy, buy you guys food and whatever and there was like one or two other times I can think of where like he would have come up to me directly and he was like talking about sports or something I was like all right whatever like people are co-workers are friendly and he was talking about stuff that really doesn't like I can talk about it but it's not stuff that I really I will not typically actively consume like football. I will not typically actively consume or keep up actively with baseball. Like that's just not my interests. Like there are certain athletes that I'll follow, but not I'm not up on like everything always. Like that's not me.
So, anyway, um, I was like, you know, being polite, courteous, you know, coworker level, um, engaged with this person. And like, there was unfortunately one day where I was working on a weekend by myself and not that there wasn't like a high volume of people on the weekends. So it was the weekend afternoon. They're only open till like two or something, two or three. Um, and I was like, yeah, sure. Like somebody else had called out, I filled in and that counselor was in seeing somebody like had an appointment. Um, and it was like, oh, hey, I didn't know you were in today, whatever. And um, like very regular. And then I didn't see him for a period of hours. And then he came back out and he was like, hey, like I bought whatever. It's in the break room. I don't remember if it was breakfast or lunch or whatever. It was like either sandwiches or bagels. And he was like, yeah, I go back and eat whatever. And I was like, okay, that's nice. Like there's really only just the couple of us here so i was like well thanks like i guess i will get up and do go grab one it was nobody there was no actual like foot traffic other than the couple of appointments that had already been in so it's like all right cool go grab one come back to do like the rest of my filing and whatever no big deal so I forget how it transpired, like I think his office was between the break room and the glass area that I sat in, like the front area, um, and he was like, oh yeah, why don't you, I forget how it came out, he was like, oh, why don't you have a seat and we can just like talk really quick or whatever, and I don't feel like I'm trying to remember, I'm not 100% positive, but I think there was a point where like, I was 19, I don't think I was, I didn't really have a lot of the same understanding of the world, obviously, as I do now, the understanding of like, levels of professionalism and whatever, but I was always, I feel pretty professional, except for the fact that I feel like I at one point did have him on Facebook, I don't know if that was while I was working there, or maybe shortly after. Um, and I think I was 18 when I started working there and then had just turned like 19. So it was very like, again, you know, because we're, I am a millennial woman, like there are things that I'm like, oh yeah, this is just a part of life. Whereas later on, like you realize like, okay, maybe you don't need to add everybody you've ever met on social media. And it's unfortunately really a bad idea to have your coworkers while, you know, so I think that that might not have been a cognitive thing that I was doing, but I forget how it got, it had come up that I had like tagged my location at one place I had went with a friend for lunch or something. And he was like, oh yeah, I saw you were at, um, saw you were at end zone. And I was like, okay, like it was just, it was a strange remark or I was a little bit off put by it. And then I forget how it came up. There was one point where like he, like, I don't remember exactly what led up to it, but I do remember at one point he like leaned into me and I was like, whoa, what are you doing? And this person who was definitely like, I'm really trying not to be rude, but I definitely remember him being like, late 30s pushing 40 and here like he was definitely like trying to be really opportunistic like you know here's this woman I got her alone and like so I was really upset by that I was like no like he he basically said like oh I thought I was feeling a vibe or something and I was like as clear as I could I was definitely like no I was trying to he like could barely have processed like what transpired and I was like you know I think I sat there for like another second or two and I was like all right I'm just need to go back to my area and I had like I said each individual like room area hallway 
section had like individual things where you had to be buzzed in or there was a manual lock behind the desk basically just in case something happened where like people walk into the wrong area when they're on their way to um anyway so just a safety precaution because of the type of facility they had locks in every spot so because of the off-putting nature of what had just happened um i like locked both access doors because i knew it was just going to be me like there was no other reception clerical person working um so i locked both doors just because i was feeling very like porcupine like all my radars went off or like that's sort of the term that i use where like um like the dinosaur from jurassic park like all your frills go up because you're like freaked out or like you feel backed into a corner and you're like all right here we go like so <sighs> there was a point where like this is like a half an hour later or whatever where like the knob kind of moved and i was like okay there's only maybe like one other two or other employees on like different corners of the building but like i was pretty confident like without seeing through the door like i felt like it was him and then he walked out and around through the waiting room and then like around the glass and he was like okay well i just wanted to quickly like say i'm sorry or whatever and i was like i forget how i said it but i basically tried to like be busy with work or like whatever it was I was just like look you know let's just not try our best not to talk about it but like there was a point where like I've definitely brought it up to my supervisor the next day um just like really quickly it was like by the way like I don't really know how much to how much weight to give this um it felt remarkably uncomfortable for me it felt very like this person was taking advantage of the fact that I was like a al female alone in an office like I don't know that he would have behaved that same way if there were more senior staff in the building like I really just wasn't sure what to make of it and I was trying to articulate that in as intelligent a way as possible she was like okay you know unfortunately I don't really know what was done or talked about but like he did continue to work there and um I continued to work there for a little while and then unfortunately like the building itself got purchased by another company so they did some downsizing and shuffling around and stuff so this is there was stuff that came on later on in my life that just couldn't I don't believe that it had anything to do with that other than that I was the least senior person and when obviously when companies start downsizing that's whoever they let go is the least senior people get let go of first, which I don't always 100% agree with. It's like the least senior people and then the people who are close to retirement age, they're usually typically like, that's what they'll do. Like, that's not new information. Um, and by, you know, this is stuff that again, in hindsight, I can look back and say, like, I understand how that happened but I definitely took it really hard when it happened like I had never been let go from anywhere I'd never been fired never been whatever um and then I could make a totally separate video I think I unfortunately that I might have to break this up into two different videos um because there's some problems that start so much earlier in my life that I'm not going to have the space to talk about based on the trajectory I'm already on. I don't want to deter and kind of change points, but I do think that like I will have to make a separate video based on like treatment of me in the public school system and what the public school system totally let me down by not doing um, and continues to let everybody who's undergoing harassment by another party just gets away with it like forever all the time um and i 
think, again, without the understanding of the frequency of how much this was happening, because it was all very, like, it all felt so much more like an isolated experience, because, again, there was not, we all didn't have, you know, these magic devices to be sharing, like, I've been bullied or I've been doing whatever. It was all very, like, it felt like you were the only person it was happening to. It felt like you were told, like, don't tell anyone or blank. Like, don't tell anyone or else I'll spread this rumor. Um, and then the advent of, like, MSN Messenger and, like, AIM Messenger, which was a whole different thing. And then, like, early MySpace, like, that's all stuff that I'm going to have to figure out how to incorporate in, in another video. Um, because I really would like to to continue moving forward on this path that I'm on. So that was my experience. And at this point, I, I think I was still living at home during both those jobs I just mentioned. Um, and then I was going to... where was I next? Oh yeah, so I had been let go, was that the same place? Yeah. So I did let go, get let go from somewhere, and then I had like this first gap ever in my career history. Again, as a young person, it felt like the end of the world, and obviously I have a little bit more of a perspective and understanding of different things now. Um, but I think that there's, um, <sighs> there was a point in my life where like I was willing to take like any job that presented itself to me and I'm still in some ways shaking out of that because for me it's like okay making money is better than not making money and like I don't think that that's wrong but it still doesn't mean like you need to get treated poorly and you shouldn't be accepting of like the bottom rung either of like whatever they're gonna pay you um, and I think that there was a another sort of sub me job that I took, but that they were totally misleading on like how startup they were, that's going to be something I'll have to explore at a different time because there was definitely like some taking advantage of me and I ended up winning, like getting reimbursed for all of my travel that I had to pay for out of pocket and a bunch of different things that that'll have to totally be its own thing. I'll explore at some point. Um, I can say that I worked in, you know, I've done retail at a liquor store where obviously people aren't always the kindest to whoever's behind the counter. I worked at BCC as well as being a student at BCC. I was also in, like, I was working in the, um, I want to say the library, but it was like the computer main room that they had. I worked there and then I would also control, like people could sign out different school equipment, like headphones and whatever, like shared textbooks and stuff like that. That was sort of my job. I would keep track of that. Um, the thing that stands out to me the most were like another I don't know how it could possibly be regulated or how it could be fixed because it's really just a person-to-person -person issue, but there was a part where not only was I doing the library portion of BCC, but I was also doing um, scribing, so basically taking people's notes for them for people who are disabled or, you know, have some other differently abled, um, I don't know what the correct thing is. Um, but this person was in a state where like, he couldn't take his own notes. So it was basically accompanying him to class, opening doors, small, very medial, like, you know, make sure you can get them water or get him 
a new pen if his pen runs out, you know, these, these are, you know, not really if he's using his pen, but like if his tools run out, make sure you have your own to, you know, make sure if you need to do like something on a voice recorder, make sure you have his email, you can send him that. Um, there was sort of like the lines got blurred a little bit with that because I could tell like as much as I was trying to be professional as much as like there is such a casual element to that job because you're still in a student role yourself you're still like taking going to your own classes going to whatever and then he definitely like made it super clear to me that he liked me like I forgot it was like over a period of like a couple inappropriate comments and then like when I did say something about that to him I was like hey I'm just not like I think I tried to take the approach of like yeah I have somebody else in my life right now like not that interested there was a point where he during his next semester asked for a different scribe and like I knew the other person who he requested basically to not have me because I turned him down like it was very very like at the time I was like really devastated about that because I was like I'm doing everything possible I'm just not doing what he's trying to get away with like sorry buddy um but I was like look I've you know I, I remember going to my supervisor I was like how did this happen like he got put on a, basically back on the list for like looking for somebody new like how did I lose more hours with this person and I forget how it exactly unfolded but I remember like figuring out what it was and how he was taking my turning him down like less than gracefully I I remember being a little bit livid but I also realized like there's nothing I can do about it it's not the other person who's gonna be his scribe's fault but like it was really I was like that was it was dirty it was very dirty I was very upset about it um, Obviously, the resource center, unfortunately, that, that was what it was called, it was a resource center at BCC, was still, like, you're not in high school anymore, but a lot of people treat it like community college is somewhat an extension of high school, and it's really unfortunate. It shouldn't be that way. People shouldn't be still exhibiting those same behaviors, but people were using it as, like, oh, we're all students here, or we're all of the same age let's you know be flirty or whatever and i was very much not interested in that not really um i think that there was a lot of it that i was kind of like very definitely scoffing at and probably too openly like i think i was just very like bitter goth kid in the corner which is like sort of still still like this like definitely still like this um, and then when I was at BCC, I was obviously in the massage therapy program. That is just the field, because it's not specific to students, it is all across whenever somebody has the opportunity to send a massage therapist a message of a particular nature they sure do i that will be its own exploration in a different video i know that i keep ex I, i'm not purposely omitting things but i definitely want to be more targeted um on on what i'm talking about specifically <sighs> i think that the ones that do happen at work are the most alarming because like you're here to be professional um like there were exes who reached out to me at different points like while i was working at david's bridal this was sort of like this is coming into like i think it was 21 22 david's bridal i was working at david's bridal and cole's and like also had like a couple desk jobs that i was doing like per diem and different things i was doing like three or four jobs at a time trying to keep paying for my apartment 
seriously by myself, even though I wasn't by myself, I basically was by myself, like paying every bill by myself. Because I was a dumbass. So I was working at David's Bridal, um, and that again it was a retail job in the mall, so it's still a high traffic area. And then, like, you know, some of my friends would go to Ruby Tuesdays, which was next door at the time. Um, doesn't exist anymore. But, like, we could go there for lunch, or some people, not necessarily me, but, like, I know a lot of girls who would go there and have, like, one or two drinks at the bar and then come back from their lunch and do whatever, which, like, good for them. Like, people were doing it. Um, I would usually go there after shift. <laughs> Um, for the same reasons, but at least I was trying to do it off the clock. Um, but again, whatever. My point being, like, this was a higher traffic area, and people realize, like, you know, you're going in and out of this building. People know, um, if you're from the area, People are just gonna see you and know like where you work and whatever and that's always made me really uncomfortable because like I don't like <sighs> there's just a specific type of interaction that I don't want to have and it's really gonna be challenging to describe without sounding like too good or too cool for school but like I really don't like when people come up to me and they're like oh yeah like I remember you from when you were little, or I remember you from when we had classes together, I remember you from, remember that, you know, we both were on that field trip in like, you know, 1984 together, and I'm, I'm obviously being facetious there, but like, you know, remember those good times in high school, and I'm like, no, you, we made those up after the fact to make up for how bad high school was, but like, we've totally reinvented that because it wasn't good. so. I remember it's that was another role where at Davis Bridal I really enjoyed that job um, I really enjoyed I think a lot of the management had it shit together and a lot of the girls I worked with a lot of the women I worked with were definitely like on the ball it was all very fun I really enjoy fashion and it was a great opportunity to explore like getting people what they want it was the really the best customer service job I think I've ever had in my life. Um, and the challenge comes from like it's another job where like you're working late and sometimes you're locking the building. Like the official end time I think fluctuated between like definitely closing at 9 p.m. or like no customers in the store at 9 p.m which sometimes can mean like, okay, some customers really pushing it and walked in at like 8.45, which doesn't happen often, shouldn't happen often, shouldn't happen at all, but like somebody walks in right before closing and then unfortunately you're still running the cashier drawer at like wrapping up your end of day tasks at like 10.30 or 11 p.m. Like especially there's, you know, the extreme case with the customers or then something like inventory where like your hours are gonna run on like they're going to. Um, so there was some of the fear at that point it was the same kind of idea of like walking back to the car by yourself, walking anywhere by yourself afterwards was daunting. Um, there were just some slightly like internalized misogynistic things that I'm I may not even be using that term the right way but like there were things where like me and one of the managers had the same shirt on like literally the same shirt same high neck same like it was a print but it was the same print um, and the most senior manager like the store manager manager so I think it was me and the assistant manager had the same shirt. I don't know exactly right now. It's all such a blur. Um, but she was like, please don't wear that shirt again. It's completely inappropriate on you. And then I remember like within the next two or three shifts, 
the assistant manager had the same shirt on and I was like, yeah, by the way, because I had already seen her in it and then I wore it and we were like laughing about it at one point. So we didn't have them on at the same day, I don't think, but like I, I remember the next time I saw her in hers, I was like, well, I don't know what it was, but like, you know, Pat told me not to wear it and like maybe you know whatever and she was like no there's nothing inappropriate about this shirt like I really don't know what I think it was just because we were built differently like the neckline was like here like really not an inappropriate shirt by any means it was good material not clingy by any like it was very I don't know um, and then there was like some minor things where like, even though it's a professional setting because of the nature of the job, like they really just don't want you to be like overly, it's a typical retail where like you don't want to wear, you want to wear black or khaki, you want to wear like muted colors and black. Black is I think a dress code for like Victoria's Secret and a bunch of other companies, but this particular role they specifically said rules about like not wearing too much makeup or not wearing bright color makeup not wearing too much in the way of like basically you don't want the attention to be on anybody except the wedding party and i'm trying to say this in as graceful a way as possible because i think it's foolish but i'm trying to be respectful of like that like, I remember there was one day where I wore, like, a muted red, like, a brick red lipstick, like, not fire engine red, not orange red, but, like, a brick red, like, not too dissimilar from what I have on now, actually. And my manager was like, please don't, don't, whatever that is, to just try not to wear it again. And I was like, okay. I think it's foolish to say like okay please don't dress how, even though you're within dress code even though you're following all the company policies even though you're a really good employee like the concept that like you can't wear bright colors I, I, without offending someone like that doesn't compute for me like I don't understand why or who, I don't really understand who, because I don't think that I ever had enough experience where like a bride was specifically offended by something I was wearing, like that was not, I'm not saying it's impossible, but I'm saying like that doesn't align with me. Um, and I also, for me personally, like I can't imagine being a customer in a store and being like, oh, this person has bangs, like, oh my god, how dare they have bangs, like, as long as the customer service representative in front of you is doing their job and they're being, you know, getting you what you need, being professional, being in a timely manner, like, mind your business, like, I don't know. Um, so there was just some very uncomfortable, like, things that I would categorize as, like, those were much more minor but they did still make me uncomfortable um, and especially because it's such a female centric environment um, it was kind of like all the more alarming to still encounter like things pertaining to to me things that were super archaic um, and then yeah, so the next job I had after working in that bubble of retail, after the Wine and Spirits store, after BCC, after that retail bubble, I worked um, at a mortgage company. I worked there for a significant amount of time, so probably upwards of I want to say three years, maybe just upwards of three years. Um, I really loved the job. I really enjoyed my supervisor was a good supervisor. And like, I think that 
I was 110% the victim of some absolutely insane office bullying. Um, and I will hold on to my concept of like, there is no way, shape or form when I reaccount the events, there is no, there's simply no way. Like when you run the numbers on the things that I received and my, like the way that I tried to be graceful about them, the poise that I tried to hold myself to, and then like her continued offensive actions. I don't, I don't know what my crime would have been other than like I was a younger female person who also entered the same department and she was close to retirement age. And like, I feel like I made every effort to not to be overly friendly and not to be like overly unfriendly. Like, I really just can't fathom, like again, I was dressing appropriately with like the, the office-wide casual Friday was like jeans day. Um, and like, frankly, there were people who got away with like t-shirts and Harley Davidson, Harley Davidson shirts who weren't customer facing where like I was really not the person pushing that. I feel like there were like, I wore blazers on meeting days. I wore, you know, I had, you know, I know how to dress professionally. Like, let's just say that, like, I really truly do. Um, and like, I was either wearing, you know, skirts that were appropriate lengths. I was wearing, you know, whether it was fitted, it was never like overly fitted, if you know what I mean. Like it was always proportional and appropriate for my form. And, you know, nylons, everything else, I was never I don't believe I was ever inappropriately dressed for the office. Um, and I, other than like, it was my first time working in that field, I think that there was a lot that I learned. You know, it was my first time learning a lot of those motions, but it was, like I said already, it wasn't my first time being in an office. So I know enough about like, how office politics work and I know how to navigate myself around computer systems even if I don't know that specific computer systems I'm an intelligent person I know how to find those things and for the most part if I can't google it if I can't watch an introductory video through that program like I will still you know I know to ask for help I know to either write a question down if somebody's unavailable at that time um, And, like, I'm trying not to be overly critical, but, like, this person was of an age where, like, she had been with the company long enough, she was, like, I kid you not, like, literally somebody who would be, like, oh, I miss smoking at the desk, or, like, do you remember when we used to get, like, you know, where you remember when we used to call people bleep without getting in trouble for it, and it was just like, some of it was really so, so stupid, like so beyond stupid. Um, and I really, I bit through a lot of it, I just bit my tongue. Um, there was, you know, plenty of times where like she was drinking from bottles out of her desk, and I'm not saying all the time, but like, it was just the way she was and it was widely accepted because she was good at her job um, not how it should have been but like she was good at her job and then there was a management shift for one reason or another like one department got eaten by another department so it was just like merged but like my supervisors sort of like the management change shifted a little bit and like we did move from like 
upstairs in the building to downstairs in the building. Um, I'm really kind of speeding through this because I was there for like a year and a half or more before this change took place. Um, so like my supervisor was still my immediate supervisor, but then he got like another person above him. I got on with her okay, but I think just like the change in the way certain things were being done or whatever, like I was basically asked to take on some more and different tasks to like assist with underwriting and assist with like a couple other things in like a minor way. It would be like, hey, can you reorganize this spreadsheet? And I'd be like, yeah, like let's rock and roll. Um, and that was received really poorly by other people. Like, I, th I don't know why I was asked to do other things, but I didn't mind doing them because it was a supervisor asking me to do that. I was like, okay, that's an extension of my role. It's outside of my current realm, but like, there's no reason for me to not assist. Like, I have no problem doing that. Um, and the more senior person, two people, the more senior two people at that point took it personally that was like, oh, this is favoritism being exhibited toward blank. And like, it was just the birth of like the most snide, any, any absurd behaviors that occurred before that point were amplified like to the nth degree. Like she was CCing me excuse me, there was, she was CCing other people on emails to me in like all caps locks being like, you know, passive aggressive and like, it's, it's in the annals of my brain and I really would prefer not to revisit it, but it was like behavior that I couldn't have fathomed and still can't fathom how I would have elicited within the confines of like what I literally did or like how I communicated back to her. I was always really trying to be either very professional. And then this is a person who like, she made it very clear. Like she started to have a problem with me, like her and her other freaking best friend, um, who they both talk shit about each other like daily, but like best friend, like stopped talking to me. They would literally like stonewall leave the office together and I'd be like, good night. And they'd be like, out the door, which again, it's your God-given right to not say goodbye to somebody, but like, it was a continued thing. And then that was like a, that's a very minor, ex minor example of something that happened repeatedly, like amongst those two people towards me. So it became like bad enough that I actually started forwarding my supervisor any separate contact that she tried to give me that I deemed inappropriate or like there was a point where when she did cc everybody on that email so I sent it not only to my immediate supervisor but also to his new supervisor I was like I really don't know how to address this I've tried to address this several times with her directly or I've tried to remove myself from the situation as much as I can like I really feel like I had been doing everything available to me to whatever and she just really had it in her head that I was like the worst person on the planet somehow like I really don't understand to this moment I don't understand and because of the way the company handled things like really poorly, it was okay. Like, you know, Erin, can you work from home some more days? And I was like, fine. But, like I, I had been doing that with no problem or like I had tried to move cubicles closer to like one or two other people and sort of away from them. Um, cause I was like, what is this ridiculous mean girls behavior? Like I'm not, giving that back to you. There is no, absolutely no need to be like this towards me. Like I'm not eliciting that. I'm not, there's no animosity from me to you. Like, why are you doing this? Like that was never, ever answered. 
and I still feel like there's so much that could have been done differently. Um, this person actually got, I believe, again, because she had been close to retirement age, that she, like, I believe ended up, like, quitting, but also because of the type of problem. I don't know if she quit after they decided to move me to a different apartment, which I still would think was stupid. Um, or like right at the same time, I really don't know. But I ended up being moved to another department, which really sucked. Um, because I was moved directly to a manager who was best friends with one of those two people who didn't like me. Which was garbage, like absolute garbage. And it was even harder because she was a manager who was my age and she did elicit like those same mean girl stupidity things towards me. And it started off as like, it started out really mild and then it went in the same direction. Um, it was like, I would do things within like you know maybe not exactly the same way but definitely not a wrong way and like she would have a conniption like a full conniption um so it just it just became insane and i ended up putting myself i was putting in applications before because I knew I couldn't tolerate it anymore. I knew it was the behavior that I deserved. It's just the way that that stupid, antiquated office was because everybody was best friends with each other and I was still, like, being... doing my job, like, doing my job and then, like, leaving at the end of the day and not giving a shit about, like, as much as I could. Um... Because there's just no need for open hostility. And I remember at one point, like, because of the other department's favoritism towards this person, as soon as, like, there was a male who joined my new department and was, like, younger than me, but not by a ton, and, like, was from some program, had just graduated his college program, and I forget what the program was, but it was basically, like, Okay, here's the new kid. He's hot off the press from company we partner with, and he started to get a lot of recognition for partnership projects that he and I worked on literally alongside each other, and he got like literal standalone awards for. And I remember literally addressing the head of the company at one point, being like, So I was at the award ceremony. This was a peer project we collectively worked on. Like, why am I not also, like, why wasn't it a peer award? Like, I'm not upset that he got an award. I'm upset that this is a collective communicative project that he, like, what's going on here? And they were like, oh, well, you know, he's from whatever. And, like, I don't know that how it would have escaped their knowledge or notice because it was definitely somebody who knew that I was on the project as well. I forget how it was said to me, but it was like, he's a year younger than me. I've been working on this, like, same project, elbow to elbow, and you're giving him an award. That's blatant favoritism, and honestly, like, I feel like it was sexism as well, um, and favoritism because of stuff and inter-office politics that shouldn't have been accounted for. So I... T I took a job in the seafood industry after that, and um, <sighs> so you know that I started to snicker already. You can kind of already tell where this is going. Um, I'm from the Greater New Bedford area. I know I've said that already, if not in this video, definitely in previous videos. Um, Um, and 
Um, New Bedford is very much known for not only its whaling he history, but definitely its current um, fishing, scalloping, everything. Um, we have a very active seaport and we're very, very proud of it. So it was sort of a cool thing. It was like, all right, I'm going to be working in logistics for a seafood company. And I felt kind of like, you know, cool. Um, it was definitely, again, another new field for me, but because again, I've been in offices and been in higher pace environments for a lot of my career. Um, this basically entailed all of the clerical stuff and a lot of like flight scheduling because you're dealing with like seafood, fresh frozen seafood. So you're dealing with like the logistics of moving that nationwide and potentially internationally. So flights, trucks, planes, trains, and automobiles. <laughs> um, and like literally just dealing with like how much volume can you put in certain containers, what types of containers, is it a plain container on this type of plane, just a plain container on, you know, it's just, there's a lot of like little additional things and I did enjoy the type of work I was doing. I can't stress enough how much I liked the job as it was in its job description. That being said, um, the manager was later on described by the HR person as like an HR nightmare to me while he was still employed because he was known for saying things to like the women who were from the temp agencies who were filling jobs and stuff and maybe people who's like I don't think it was exclusive to, but I think that it definitely did involve like people whose language, like first language was not English, so they might not have understood the innuendos he was putting on them, because I definitely did witness that. There were two or three girls who were like not, like their first language was not English, and not that that's a bad thing at all, but like he would say like really old school, like white American male things to people who like weren't getting what he was saying and would just be like haha and like go back to whatever they're doing just like for fear of their job like or for because they didn't know any better they were like you know this guy is already insane there's nothing we can do about it and I just want to get through my shift so like focus back on task so basically I was taking over for um, one other person who was moving to another department, she trained me for a little while, she moved upstairs to her other job, or she moved on wherever she was going. Um, and things went downhill fairly quickly, I think I was there for a total of six months, um, maybe five months, I don't fully remember, because it was just like... He was so insane, like so utterly like insane, like entitled Irish elderly male who was comfortable in his job, which is the worst thing you can be when you're a white American male, like entitled as shit. And like, I'm sure, unfortunately, he's still there doing all the same things. Um, and it made it that uncomfortable that like, again, didn't make me feel safe enough to like stay until the end of like whatever my notice was because like he knew that I was planning on leaving he knew I sure as shit wasn't happy there because I had told him like please don't say these things to me or please don't like exhibit whatever and like that type of joke isn't funny like there was a time where he literally while I was working like it basically wasn't behaving the way that he wanted me to like react like like the other people did to like stomach his bullshit misogyny and he basically was like whoa what are you like basically asking hormonal remarks about like where I was in my cycle where somebody else in the office was uh, like what are all the women on their cycle or something and it was like Mm 
No, like just because I'm not going to openly tolerate your garbage doesn't mean like you're I don't get paid enough for that. Like frankly at any job you don't get paid enough for that, but at that job I certainly wasn't. And yeah. So this particular place, like it wasn't it was just really clear. Like he as soon as he realized I wasn't going to stomach his bullshit. Um they whatever it was insane it was utterly completely insane um he started showing much more favoritism like not instead of changing his behavior of how he was talking to me he decided to talk to me less and less and talk to the other girls more like to tell me things as an intermediary but like there were so many like little stupid like schoolboy stuff that I can't even fathom again can't fathom still happened but like he would like slide an ice cube across the desk to hit my keyboard or like little stupid things where like it's like okay well now that's dumb of you now I have to clean this up like what is gained here I'm literally being distracted from my job because you're being an asshat like and in that particular role again like what are you doing you're climbing me come here let me pet you and you can be on camera so yeah in that particular role because again you're dealing sometimes you're facing the truck drivers who are picking things up like those are unfortunately jobs also where like you expect like from people coming in and out they're gonna be like all right thanks sweetie or they're all right thanks hon or whatever and you have to kind of just like no problem like stuff like that um you get a lot of the like you know why don't you smile more why don't you whatever and it's kind of like well again i don't get paid enough to flirt with you i don't get paid enough to flirt back to you you're not gonna pay me to flirt with you like what are we doing here please leave like <laughs> but again like you there is a a point that you get to where you realize like people are not going to be as kind to you or your manager is not going to be as whatever if you immediately realize like this person isn't going to play ball with the way that we operate and like yeah things shouldn't be this way and that's really what i by this point you're very well aware like i get hung up on how things should and shouldn't be all the time always um and like the way that things could operate in a better, easier manner. Um, so yeah, as much as I was much more receptive to and prepared to deal with things on an external way, I am not, especially from a supervisory male who should know better, like, Again, like people probably got away with it for too long and he was close to retirement age. Like, I I don't know. I really just I don't understand how it's continually the good people who have like the worst job experiences. Like, cause they won't put up with things. There was definitely a point where like I realized that nothing I could say about that job like not that he was the only problem there because there were definitely some other HR things that totally were wrong but like his behavior in that department because seafood is unfortunately very much like an old boys network and like everybody who's in the seafood industry I was later in life to learn like not too far in the future um, has the same problem, same whatever. So I went from that company to another seafood company where I felt like this was going to be a step up for me. I was again taking over for somebody who was going at this point on maternity leave. They trained me as best they could, but then their due date, they basically went into labor like way before their due date so it was a combination of me still going through the onboarding like process that's necessary for new employees and then her also like you can't control that when 
a female goes into labor is really just like there's no um, we all know I mean anybody with a brain knows like there is no controlling that so I really don't know how to say this other than like I definitely also got the short end of the stick there because the woman who had trained me who was the only person doing her job also because she was the only person who had done that one role like yes there were other departments that she talked to every day but she had basically designed the role up down forwards and backwards excuse me so when I went to ask other people in the building like what was going on or like why was this like this or hey this system's glitching can you come check it out it was like oh like didn't she show you or like I feel like I was asking reasonable questions to say like hey something is not working can you please check it out and the stark reality is like not only was she the only person in that job she really was like the whole facility ended up being like so understaffed that it hurt except for the sales department that had like 13 people in-house at all times like every other thing was like there was one hr person and there was one like one of everything really except for like two pseudo co-managers and then like like so two basically sales managers and then the sales department which was sort of roughly where i was situated but it was basically like me relaying the completed orders and like basically being sales admin and as well as like some marketing roles like there was a lot of overlap um and i don't have a problem with a lot of work but i do have a problem with like being <laughs> again it is the type of old boys network problem that you run into where like people who are have been in sales like you think of like the the people who have been in the rat race which is not really a term people use that often anymore but like the quintessential rat race of like nine to five working class hero paying off my third boat maybe like some of the people who had been in it for a long time were making way more money than they like, knew how to spend basically supporting whatever and buying a center, summer home and having their fourth wedding and like all these different things that you above a certain tax bracket it's just like okay like cool like that's where everybody else is at so again me as like a relatively young person at the time i was definitely working out like every day ish or every other day so i was like this felt person who like i'll see if i can throw up a photo of like that same time frame i don't even know if i have one right now but like and a pixie cut not too dissimilar from what I had now it's basically like a, a little bit longer like easier to style I had the sides buzzed um, and again like workplace appropriate I keep pointing to my closet as if you can see it but like whereas in my other jobs I was like a lot closer to the freezer for like the logistical um, end of like working very close to the fish freezers, very close to things like the office was, and in fact, just the way the building was structured. Either the wind was coming in from outside and it was winter, or like there was a freezer right there. So I was able to wear like thicker sweaters and stuff. And then for this role, it was just the way the building was situated. And because my role was slightly different, I was in a different department and not in logistics. So. I was able to dress again a little bit more professionally more like the family of pencil skirts and the family of like you know slacks and stuff and button downs um because the temperature was not a factor so i was like okay cool there was a lot of 
comments, and I wish that I had had the bandwidth to record them or write them down about who has said what, but like definitely comments ensued quickly and from every corner. Like there was one point where I had something on that was like leopard print or whatever, and so it was like, oh, you're dressed like a cougar today, which is like, okay, slip of the tongue, everybody laughed, whatever. But then it was just like, there were other points where some, like, it was repeatedly said, it was like, oh, you know, your boyfriend is so lucky, or like, oh, you're, you know, whatever, such a young, like, pretty person, like, da da da, da. and, but there were some of them that were like really a lot more off-putting. And again, it's it's hard for me to access exactly what was said, and maybe that's beneficial um, for all, everybody because it was like I was doing the best that I could. There were some definite holes in what I was able to be taught in the time frame, and then it found out later on that there were errors that I was making that somebody could have been actively correcting and telling me that I was doing wrong or like showing me how to do things, but they were correcting on the back end that they never ever told me about, that I was still expected to be held, like, it was just, there, there were so many things that like, I couldn't have known, wasn't shown, and then when I was asking questions to help correct those, they were like, well, we can't, whatever, and they were like, kept reaching out to the person who was on maternity leave, which I think is fucking ridiculous and illegal, like, how are you going to continue to reach out to a person who just had a baby when she's scheduled her leave? She told you months and months and months and months and months in advance that you could have, like, hired somebody on earlier to train them. Like, it was definitely, like, a male problem of, like, they, this was obviously the first one in the office who was going through all these things and, like, I don't know. Like, it was very just... A lot of the comments and the remarks were like tone deaf about like you know having the sales department be like oh yeah is the portuguese princess back yet or oh is whatever back yet and it's like well no like why can't you just say her name like why are you being a nasty little man bitch about it like why there shouldn't be that <laughs> you know like or like, oh, like the eye rolls of like, glad, she, glad that you're here, glad that whatever. And I'm like, yeah, she was probably, if she was bitter, she was bitter because she was dealing with you, assholes. Like, and then it was just like, there were times where I was working late again, alone in the office or alone with one other person who was uncomfortable. Um, one of the managers was just the most asinine, like, entitled person. He looked like a... Uh... I'm gonna come up with the wrong word. I'm gonna look it up really quick. This guy, he looked like the male Gungan King in Star Wars. Like he was just the skinniest little legs, the thinnest arms, and he had like the most prominent, like really serious beer belly, really serious like jowls and stuff. And I wouldn't remark upon that, except that he was also actively making comments about the woman who was on maternity leave's body, and I could hear through the grapevine, and his office walls weren't so thick that, like, he was making, actively making comments about me, like, when I got up to, like, walk around or down the hallway or did other things. Like, it was alarmingly, like, with alarming frequency. Um, and it wasn't even both managers in this case, it was really just the one that was, like, So again, it was during the time where like I was doing, I don't, I think I was doing rowing at the time. Like I was a lot more physically active. Um, and like there was one point that they were making, they said something about rowing and I was like, oh yeah, I do that, you know, on the weekends too and whatever. And they were like, huh. I was like, first of all, rowing is not a sport you fuck with. Like rowing is a full body exercise. And, like, just the concept of, like, I, he said something, I was participating, and then he, like, scoffed at me. And there was this just regular thing of, like, I would be at a meeting discussing, like, logistics for an event that we were supposed to be putting on. And then 
I would say, like, actively make a suggestion, and he'd look at me like, why are you opening your mouth? You're supposed to be taking notes, you stupid vagina. Like, all the time. All the time. Like, I would make really constructive, like, hey, like, how about this? Or why don't we do, like, we can set aside active time to do product photography or doing different things. And they would just be like, Um, and then there was another point where I was doing, like, their marketing newsletter, and they, I had to explain to them, I was like, hey, I found this person who reached out to me about doing product photography, like, professional photographer who was reaching out about doing, like, fresh and frozen photography for the company. So, it was emailed back to me in one way or another that like, oh yeah, he's great and all, but it's just too expensive, so just look up pictures of, like, basically saying to go use Google and, like, search for photos. <laughs> like, stock photography, go Google image, search up anything and like put it on the newsletter it's like why would you not want to use your own product like why would i have to explain to you why you like do i need to literally like glue copyright law to your forehead like what it was just the most asinine things and again like there was such a significant age gap and such a specific like active awful entitlement issue that it was like very it was very clear that i couldn't make a difference and i really just got to the point where like i there wasn't anybody to talk to and i did try and talk to a couple different people there were a couple other people who showed me certain things but again like because the woman who designed doing those things wasn't there and like nobody was able to do that hands-on type of thing with me because they were consistently understaffed based on probably paying the sales team most of what they should be paying other departments um like being really cushy for one department and being really really bare bones for every single other one um and on top of that it was it was just sexual harassment left right center it was it was really bad so that was the only job that I was perfectly fine being completely like let go from um, because and it wasn't even fair at that point what happened was they as I believe as soon as she was ready to go back to them from maternity leave I got let go like I can nobody can convince me anything else because it was roughly like three to four months and they let me go unexpectedly on like a Friday right before whatever. It's like, all right, cool. I get my summers to myself now. Like, <sighs> yeah, there were just a couple times where like I did say like, you know, I did speak up, I was like, hey, this is completely inappropriate, like, please don't, whatever, and they'd be like, okay. Um, and honestly, that might be the end of my work once, because a lot of the jobs that I have had have been without problems. Like, I've had male bosses that are really good before, and I've had, you know, older female co-workers who are really great people who have actually taught me a lot so it's like I'm really not there's no there should not be an issue um but there is and there has been um I think Unfortunately, due to some of the length that this video already has, I'm realizing that there's going to need to be like a two-part situation. Um, 
at least. So thank you. I know during this video I came up with like four separate videos that I really like to do. So if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you do have other content that you'd like to contribute that is of this nature, um, please go ahead and do that. And I can, I think a lot of my viewers at this point um, have either an email or a text number for me. Um, at the moment, my Instagram, my only public Instagram right now is I have Technicolor Kaleidoscope and I have Technicolor Kaleidoscope Oratory, which is all one word, and that's mostly centered around my um, podcast, but I'm happy to also receive um, other messages on there. So thank you for listening, and I'm sorry to say, like, I'm perfectly aware that plenty of other stories very similar to this have occurred, so there will be a part two coming probably tomorrow. Um, thank you.